What's up, everybody? Whew, Christmas is over, Mike. It's a new year. Yeah. It's all, it's all new. Congratulations. We made it. We did, although this, this year's not looking much better already. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see how things go. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to look on the bright side of things. I've got, I've got a, couple, uh, a couple shows coming up in February that I'm very much looking forward to. So... Let's hope that, that COVID fucks off and they don't get canceled. I've been waiting two years now for these shows. <laughs> two fucking years they've been postponed. I was supposed to see these. I, I'm going to see Letter Kenny and I'm going to see Tool. And I was supposed to see them in February of, two, of 2020. And now, now here we are. Finally. Finally the shows are coming. God damn. All right, so... Skeletoids. We finally come to Skeletoids. And Skeletoids. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Sadly to say, there wasn't as much there as I hoped, but nonetheless, we do have a couple cool. Yeah, nonetheless, Skeletoids. Right, right. I would Fuck be happy yeah. for just one. And I'm sure there's tons of ghost stories where people are seeing just skeletons, and there's. We'll get into the types of Skeletoids. Why not do it now? When I hear the the word skeletoid, which is new to me, we you know we that's our new favorite word. Uh, but pertaining to monsters and cryptids, like we're going to talk about, I see two kinds. One is the classic, good old fashioned deadite, a cave dwelling, treasure guarding, reanimated skeleton, and then two, it could bleed into a dreadfully thin or skeletal in appearance type creature. For example. Uh, just so people can get on the same page of what I'm talking about, the rake or slender man, and, and even some shadow men and, uh, and other cryptids that have that appearance. So for you, Mike, which one pops into your head when you hear the word skeletoid? If I hear skeletoid, I'm thinking a living thing that resembles a skeleton. Because if it was a fucking reanimated skeleton, you're going to say it's a fucking skeleton. You know, right? It, uh, just because it's called a skeletoid, that makes me think it's it's skeletal in nature, but not necessary. Like the first thing that pops into my head when I hear skeletoid is an alien resurrection, that hybrid alien. Right. That's the first thing that pops into my head when I think a skeletoid. You know, take that, take off the big fucking stupid alien egg head off the back of it, and that's that. In my mind, that would be a skeletoid. Also, Skeletor is a skeletoid. <laughs> See, I would consider Skeletor a skeletoid. Um, for my, for me, it just good old fashioned. Uh, we've got plans for you, girl, girl. Skeleton pops into my head when I think of skeletoids, and that's what I was hoping to find here. And I did, and I'll save him for the end. But the first one we're going to talk about. It's based off an incident called the Church Hill Collapse. And this one started off as a skeletoid. This is where it comes from, is that book in Humanoids that we had talked about a few shows ago. And uh, it turned out to be something totally different. The story coming from the book in Humanoids vaguely goes like this. In 1873... A railroad tunnel was made 4,000 feet long straight through Church Hill in Richmond, Virginia. Again, Virginia, with your weird shit. God, I love you. In October of 1925, the tunnel suffered a collapse with a work train inside. There were four men killed, and of course they sent a rescue team. And now this is where the story splits. The book says that witnesses state that a skeletal body with flesh hanging from its bones and blood running from its mouth emerged from the rubble. And that's all the book says about it. What? Yes. So so it could have been a zombie? Could have been a zombie. Could have been uh, somebody in a cool Halloween costume. Some people who talk about this case, and I'll get into it. This case has been very well looked at. 
and uh, scrutinized. It could have been somebody that was part of this fucking wreckage in this cave-in, you know? But looking at the tunnel itself, I came across this variation. While rescuers were searching for survivors, they came across a, quote, ungodly creature covered in blood, its skin hanging from its muscular body, already very much not a fucking skeletoid, jagged teeth crouching over one of the victims of the collapse. The rescuers chased the creature. It had, wait, it had jagged teeth? Yes, that's how it was described. Like broken teeth, maybe? Or like fucking venom teeth? I, I, I would say probably broken teeth. If they were like venom teeth. That's the wrong answer, Mateo. It's supposed to be venom teeth. I wish. If they would have said it, a mouthful of serrated pokey teeth, fangs or something like that, yeah. But jagged teeth, uh, I think of more like a donkey's chip teeth or something like that. Maybe Nosferatu instead of... Oh, yeah. yeah. Nosferatu teeth, that would be... Uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> but uh, in this other version, the rescuers chased this creature 2.2 miles away where they lost it in the Hollywood Cemetery. And this gave birth to the story of the Richmond Vampire, not Skeletoid. So they're calling it a vampire. Right. I wonder if it's because of the teeth that they're calling it a vampire. Or that it was crouched over you know, one of these bodies that were recovered in a the wreckage. There's only four people recovered in this wreckage uh, as far as what people t- say is it being somebody that was involved in the wreck. People who witnessed it say that it definitely wasn't somebody involved in the wreck because as it emerged... People fled from it. They said nobody wanted to render it aid. It wasn't a super bashed up human body that needed help. So that that, that kind of people use that as proof of it being something otherworldly. There's also some some book that came out in 2001 where they go into this case and they mention that they, they've even identified this this one of the workers that was killed in this thing that has it. Injuries similar to what's described. It could be that. And they even name them. But uh, what's weird about this Richmond vampire, the locals have always claimed to be home to a vampire. In fact, there is a mausoleum belonging to a fucking vampire right there in Hollywood Cemetery. The mausoleum of W.W. Poole was built in 1912. He died in 1922. Now, locals state that Poole was chased out of England in the 1800s for being a vampire. And if you look up W.W. Poole, he did come over from England to the United States, and I think it was 1860, maybe 80, I'm not sure. So these people might have just witnessed this Richmond vampire trying to get a free sucky sucky on some dead bodies. Wouldn't that make it more of a ghoul, though? Come on, people, get your get your <laughs> creatures straight. If it's sucking on a corpse, it's not a vampire. Right. Because it all, as we all know, if a vampire were to drink from the dead, then the vampire could also die. Right. So, so ghoul indeed. You know what? That's that's even better. So it changed from a skeletoid to a vampire to a ghoul. Yeah, dude, they ghoul, ghoul it up, you know? Cool it up, coolie. <laughs> and that would explain, like, the jagged teeth and, like, the ragged-looking flesh. Like, that, That to me, I, I said zombie earlier, but given what we know now, it seems to me more like a ghoul. Right. I definitely agree with that name more than what we've, we've, they've, just, they've given so far. It's apparently the Richmond vampire has been featured in a few things, even as a villain in a Buffy the Vampire Slayer comic book series. But I just found it interesting how it started off as one thing and transformed into another. And then, like, I, I'll, I'll put the pictures, or, or at least a link to this mausoleum of W.W. Poole into the show notes. There's a lot of uh, masonry symbols and a lot of Egyptian symbols on there. And uh, it, it's, it had to be, like, sealed off. Like, you can't go in it ever. There's no handles or locks to get into it. It's just like these iron bars that were cemented into place. So people just 
I mean, the story picked up pace as far as being a vampire and exaggerated from being just this tunnel crash and seeing this weird skeleton thing. I th- it, this book that was, I think it came out in 2004 or 2001, kind of sens- sensationalized the story. It's where you see these embellishments of this this Richmond vampire, but then coincidentally this mausoleum to where it's always been said to be the home of a vampire. It was just like this weaving pattern out of story to myth to legend to <laughs> to stuff that really exists, like this mausoleum and this, this cemetery and all that stuff. It was pretty interesting. I always like when when like historical sites have some crazy folklore story attached to them. It's it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I mean, not even it doesn't even have to be a historical site. I mean, not too far from me, there's a a graveyard, but it's an old, old, old graveyard. Like the, the people who founded the city when the settlers came here are buried there. It's very, very old. And it would just be super cool to have a vampire legend come from the city. And not only that, past that cemetery and like just from as a, you know, even from being a kid, knowing that's where people say the vampire lives, isn't that big ass mausoleum in the back? Why is it the only one? Why is it all the way in the back? That, that would be so cool. I, I would love to have that feeling again. Just like there's always a spooky house on a block when you're a kid. Yeah, or or in my case, where I talked on the show before about the uh, the witches witches hollow. Yeah, or in my case, the crack house. Which one's the crack house on the block? Which is equally as spooky. That sounds less mystical, though. More <laughs> scary, less mystical. So even with a little bit of embellishment from uh, the the further research, what do you think? Just ghoul, huh? That's that's very interesting. I didn't think of ghoul at all. I was confused about. Uh, it's both descriptions saying this thing's skin is ripped off its body, exposing its skeleton. To me, that's weird. Yeah, that it is weird because um, you know ghouls aren't exactly undead, so it's not like they're rotting. Um, but but ghouls are are supposed to be like a, a living creature. You know, so they shouldn't be rotting and having flesh hanging off their bones and everything. Right. Um, but, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Maybe the ghoul was caught in this cave-in. It, it had to re regain energy so it was feasting off the, the victims who died to get it so that it could regenerate and and hunt again. Right. I didn't, when I read it, the story from the book, I didn't get the feel of a vampire. Uh, at all, especially as they described it as like a skeletal figure with flesh hanging off of it. And then reading into it more and for the research and the legends and lore and talk about this vampire that's supposed to be buried in this mausoleum. There's even stories about how there was a great evil on top of Church Hill and building the tunnel fucked with it and woke it up. And when I first heard it, after reading this other description, I thought of something that uh, maybe was caught in that collapse as well. Maybe there was a pocket or a cave, its domain that was close to it. Maybe it just (laughs) used one of those cool, like, subway doors that are always locked in the tunnels. It just goes in there and lives in there like a fucking ninja turtle. Who knows? But it definitely, I got that feeling of maybe it was just caught up in that collapse with these people. Yeah, it's, and, and it's like, what's what's all this ruckus? And it comes out its front door and it sees all these people out there. And it's like, oh, you sons of bitches, get off my yard. Yeah, We, 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 we don't know where to go. We're all caved in and we're dying here. He's like, oh, I'll show you dying. And then he fucking rips their throats out and starts eating their faces. Right, and then the rescuers show up and he's got to hide in that cemetery. That's it. That's it. We found, we figured it out. Either that or it was just some crackhead. <laughs> cannibal crackhead oh fuck that's a, we are I, I i'll admit guys i got a skeleton <laughs> <Cannibal crackhead. laughs> i've got a song for skeletoids already prepped for this but now i might have to do a, a cannibal crackhead song oh shit we we can do two we'll open the song with with skeletoids marching and end it with cannibal crackhead <laughs> oh man another another name that i noticed when reading about these, quote, skeletoid or skeleton-esque things, uh, the title of Phantom, what do you think about that? I picture a guy in a purple jumpsuit riding a lion. 
<laughs> with Phantom? That's what Phantom makes you think of? And also Billy Zane. Oh, there you go. The only real Phantom. I don't know, it just seems old-timey, like wood engraving, like a, a ghost being depicted as a skeleton with some type of shroud on. I don't get skeleton yeah, from Phantom. Yeah, that's, like, I, I feel like that would be a, a good description of, like, a wraith as well. In fact, I think in D&D, uh, a wraith is, like, a black skull with, like, surrounded by shadow. Ooh. Hmm. A wraith, that's, a. Uh... That's a good. That's a good word for those old timey drawings of those ske- skeletons walking in someone's bedroom. Yeah, those those are pretty fucking creepy. Yeah. Well, the uh, the one that I did find in this book that I found fascinating is it's got the name of the Borrego Phantom, a legend coming from the deserts between Seventeen Palms area and the familiar Superstition Mountains in Arizona slash California, respectively. And I like this one because it's considered a, a legend, a story that starts like most legends, quote, it happened one dark and stormy night type of thing, and, it, and that's how the story goes, but it, it uh, has the character of an old prospector named Charlie Arizona. What a name. That is a fucking fantastic name. Right? You know, Charlie he, Arizona, it's your service. He's like a, it's a prospector, you know, at that time it's perfect. He's doing a lot of traveling. He's from Arizona. Which Charlie are you? I'm Charlie Arizona. Yeah, yeah. And you know he's got a fantastic mustache and a bowler hat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll start with the beginning of the story. The first account of this thing comes from old prospector Charlie, Charlie Arizona. Uh, as no- Chucky as. Yeah, <laughs> Chucky as. As noted in Philip A. Bailey's 1940, quote, grand collection of desert tales, history, legend, and personalities of the old California and Southwest deserts. Good luck finding it. So as far as when this took place, you know, it came out in 1940. We're talking about prospectors. This should give us a good timeline. But old Charlie was camping one night some four miles southwest of Borrego, California, he was suddenly jolted awake by the cries of his donkeys. Thinking someone had intruded onto his camp, he exited his tent to calm his donkeys and to investigate. Now, if I was sleeping next to donkeys, I'd already be nervous. Why, donkeys are friendly and lovely animals. Until they get hungry. And eat some barley. Or your face while you're sleeping. I don't think they do that. <laughs> I've never, I've, I've met many a donkey and I can tell you I've never had my face eaten. Yeah. But have you slept next to any donkeys? No. Why do they become carnivorous in the middle of the night? Yeah. They're they get some serious munchies and they're like, I crave the flesh <laughs> of humans. I'm coming for you humans. And then it looks around and there's no humans. It's like, well, I guess I'll stick to hay. Yeah, all donkeys are afflicted with, like, a werewolf thing. The moon comes out, and they'll just eat whatever the fuck's there. That's why they're all kept in barns and shit. They're shunned by the horse community. <laughs> they're the black sheep of the horse community. <laughs> <laughs> so as he soothed his animals, he noticed a faint light coming from about 200 yards to the east. He quickly relaxed, thinking that someone lost in the desert had luckily stumbled onto his campsite instead of it being someone trying to raid it he stood there as he watched what had to be a torch or a lantern get closer and closer he got ready to greet whoever it was and offer them assistance but as the light drew closer old shuck shit a kitty when he realized it was no manner of wayward traveler at all he said staggeredly stumbling towards him and his camp was an eight foot tall straight up skeleton Although he thought it was holding a lantern at first, it was now close enough for him to see that the light was coming from within its giant rib cage itself. Chuck stood there in amazement as it just stumbled right past him, right past his camp, and came to a nearby ridge where it scaled the rocks without even slowing its pace. So that's the type of skeletoid I wanted to hear about. <laughs> yeah, that also reminds me of a D&D creature. Ooh. There's there's a there's a skeleton in D and D, I I think it ranges from ten to twelve feet tall, and it has a fire inside of its rib cage. Oh God, yeah, that's 
That's him. This is that guy's little brother. Yeah, that's 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 what they look like when they're just little baby skeletoids. <laughs> now the story gets interesting because that wasn't the only time somebody has claimed to see this thing. Two years later, story has it that two separate prospectors had an encounter with the lighted skeletoid. But these few sightings were just stories told between prospectors and travelers, just that. And these stories became legend a year later when a traveler saw the same thing, an eight to nine foot tall skeleton with a light coming from its chest, making its way through the mountains. But this guy, Stun, reported the sighting to everyone he could at his destination, which was Velocito train station, where word quickly spread like wildfire. This probably due to the time prompted folks to do what I think would be the perfect thing, and that's to immediately go out and look for it. Did they have any success? Yes, they did, sir. They found it. A group found it. They even were able to shoot it. They said it had no effect. Why would you shoot a skeleton? Like, that's, that seems silly. That's like, that's like using bow and arrow on a skeleton. It's like, you're good. It's, it's fucking bone, man. Just run up and smash it with a hammer or, or a shovel or something. Most definitely. There's been a lot of things I had said I'd shoot on site. This is not one of them. It's even at like eight or nine feet tall. If you've got like a heavy rifle, you can probably just smash through its leg bone, especially if it's just walking. Even if it was doing like a creepy satanic dance, I'd probably blow its head off. But it was just walking. I, di- I totally disagree with this. I- I'm pro-skeletoid. So pro-skeletoid, but opposed to reptoids. Oh, li- li- lizard wizards in particular. Okay. I just want to make sure that we've got this straight. For my, what, my what cancellation if for when I run for presidency, you could just cancel What me if with... it's a skeletoid lizard, though? Then what? Then what do we do, Mateo? I don't know. We got to see. I, I got to <laughs> see if it's using magic, if it's just, you know, walking through the desert. Depends on its actions. Depends on its actions. What are your intentions? <laughs> so two of the men from this party who took a shot at it, they did the next best thing. The next thing you'd want them to do. They followed it, but they were unable to keep up with it because it just kept this steady pace. And no matter what obstacle was in front of it, it would just climb it without slowing down. And of course, people would have to, you know, put probably set down the rifle, climb up this way, hand me my rifle. There's it was a rocky terrain. It's the desert. And the creature just walked away. They just lost it, watched the light disappear into the desert night. So it's peaceful. It doesn't, it doesn't want to hurt anybody. It just just wants to be left alone. Right. That's what I gathered from this. I saw nothing just wrong. Just because I'm a skeleton, they think I'm a monster. Leave me alone. Now he's walking around with a limp because one of you assholes gave him a winger to the thigh. And he's probably crying now. If skeletons can cry, you made this one cry. I hope you're proud of yourselves, you sons of bitches. Right. Exactly. Later legends probably report that light, and then uh, the sound of, <laughs> as he cries, as he just makes yeah. his lonely trek you through the desert. It. It's it's a sob followed by a shh, because he has to drag his leg now because he <laughs> fucking broke it. <laughs> oh, fucking jerk prospectors. Fuck. I fuck know. Guys. Can't leave well enough alone. So what happened to this being? Did it just disappear? Does the tale of uh, our giant glowing skeletoid homie of, of neglect. And, well, yes and no. This is where that crap I was talking about, myth becoming legend, unknown events explained by unknown things, uh, comes into play. After word got around, people went and looked for it and found it. And so for the most part, it was real. It, it, people had seen it. <laughs> it had been shot at. I mean, th- this isn't too far back this is in the past for sure so i think that if people report something they go out and look for it and see it and shoot at it and it's witnessed by other people making these travels that's pretty much making it real if you live in that area right i mean that's gonna it's just i would say so yeah yeah it can be seen from time to time you know uh, by other travelers after these events cross-referencing the story i didn't expect to find what i did there was an the you know the or, or origin story of this thing. Old Chuck, the prospector, 
that we talked about, but I didn't find much else. Funny enough, I did come across this story on uh, like a couple list of legends from Arizona's articles. But this is one of those lists about Arizona legends. It says, eight, the eight-foot skeleton believed to be the ghost of a prospector who discovered and worked the phantom mine. This apparition haunts the late desert nights somewhere between the Superstition Mountains and 17 Palms as an eight-foot skeleton with a lantern in its chest. So you look this up on the internet today. It's, it's there. It's something cool that happened and supposedly could be seen there. But I want to know if it had been being seen today. Is this a phenomenon that you can see today? Is it just a phenomenon? I hope so. Right. So what, something weird happened. All the things I were finding were coming from travel sites. Really? In fact, that's where this one I just read you came from list is from highwaywestvacations.com. And now all these travel sites, most of them mention the skeleton. And then I found what I was looking for, a lone comment in response to the giant skeleton and his light. And this quote says this. I'll read it to you. This is from TripAdvisor, dude. And this was written in July of 2020. And this person, quote, Anne says, and this is, this, this is not talking about the skeleton. This is just talking about Arizona. It says, I was camping just outside the mouth of Glorietta Canyon, south of Borrego Springs. And during the wee hours, still dark, noticed lights way across the valley in the area of Rock House Canyon. It looked like vehicle headlights coming down the mountain beyond that canyon when making the right angle turns first to the west, then toward the south. I watched them for a long time, just sort of wondering why they'd be that much traffic so late at night, and also trying to figure out where those roads were. The next day, looking across again, it was 100% clear. There were no roads where I had seen these lights, nor is it all that possible that ORVs could traverse the terrain. So there you go. I have no idea what I saw. None. So it's like a phantom light thing. Yeah, that's what a kind of, maybe a, some type of mirage thing. That either I mean, this person obviously didn't approach the lights. Maybe it could have been an eight-foot fucking tall skeleton if they walked up on it. Oh, I hope it was. I hope it was a family of them. Right, right. And that's why it looked like headlights. Exactly. I wonder if it is some type of phenomenon. When the second group of prospectors saw this thing, one of them was shaking the fuck up. He was tripping out when he got back into town and told people about it. And the other one didn't want to admit that that's what they saw. Now, I don't know much about camping and fucking fires, but this second prospector, he said that what they witnessed was a reflection of their campfire coming off the rocks in the distance. I don't know if desert rocks are super fucking shiny or at least enough to reflect a campfire? I don't know. But they he, that's what... That, it, seems, that seems like a suspect explanation to me. It sure does. It seems... And especially if we're getting reports of something similar, almost the same phenomenon. I don't know if I want to say it's the same phenomenon. But uh, that's not happening to this person with their campfire or whatever they're doing. I don't even know if they have a campfire. It, it, it's more modern times. Maybe they just had a tent with a light. And they're still seeing this floating light in the desert. So until somebody approaches it in modern times, I'm saying this fucking dude's still making his lowly trek through the desert. I hope so. I want to go and find him. And I'll, 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 I'll see if I can get an interview with him. <laughs> like, Excuse me, giant glowing skeleton, sir. Do you, do you, do you have a moment to speak on the podcast and then hope I don't get incinerated or eaten? No, he'll be like, are you armed? Just don't shoot sir, me. Sir, I come in peace, sir. So if you are brave enough, you can go camping in the Arizona desert and you would have a chance to see your skeleton homie walking around. Or at least his light, right? Yeah, and then you can run up on him and see if you actually find him. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting how it, it, it's kind of it turned out to be maybe something like the brown lights or something that's a, a natural phenomenon that's a particular for certain areas. 
we've seen those lights that shoot out of the lakes. God, where is that in the? Is that in the Philippines where they have those ghost lights that shoot out of the water? Oh, I I don't know. There's ghost lights that do crazy shit all over the fucking world, man. Yeah, Brown Mountain stuff. Who knows? You know, but it's just something that just you can go see it today. It's just something that happens. And I, but I just it it ended up being something like that until somebody approaches, like I said. But still, multiple people reported that it wasn't just a light; that it was in fact an eight foot tall skeleton. That's so weird. Instead of it just being like a just a myth of like go out there and see these lights, these weird lights. You, if you sit here, the lights coming from an eight foot tall skeleton. I wonder why that's added in. Because it's awesome. And probably the source of all of the lights. <laughs> yeah, I think they might have been seeing an actual eight foot tall skeleton. So I asked myself, what's going on here? This the story has everything you can want. A first encounter, reporting it to people, a search for the creature that's successful, sightings that continue seemingly to this day. We talked about the types of skeletoids that that could be, and you're talking about the skinny ass creatures, like like you had mentioned. And then we've got these bare bones skeletons that are moping around. I, for some reason, my mind says that's some dark wizard necromancy shit. Oh God, maybe maybe lizard wizard necromancy shit. They're at it again, Mateo. <laughs> I I always love, especially in the desert, something about the desert and and evil wizard magic just goes together so nicely. So I, I want it to be evil wizard magic in the desert, summoning these giant fucking skeletons. They're they're the the skeletons of the red haired giants. That's what they are. Ooh. And they're using Atlantean crystals to to raise them from the dead. And that's what the glow is. They put the the crystals in their rib cage, and then they they do their evil chants over these Atlantean crystals, which then absorb the energy from ancient Atlantis and somehow pulls the soul of these red haired giants into the crystal to empower the skeleton so that it may, may march around and, and provide spooky light for, for desert dwellers. Woo. You just wrote the next Marvel movie. <laughs> yeah. In, in your face, Marvel who needs Dr. Strange now CGI that you pieces of shit. Yeah. Did, did you watch Spider-Man yet? Fuck yeah, I watched oh Spider-Man. We got to do a nerd alert, dude. So awesome. Loved it. I kind of like the idea of it being a giant skeleton too, dude, and, and in the, it being in the desert. The giant skeleton shit has always intrigued me. So what do you think? Is it is it the skeleton of, of the red-haired giants being summoned by evil lizard wizards in the desert? I think it could be... You know, being serious, I think it could be some type of necromancy, some type of maybe more witchcraft thing. I think that skeleton had a job. I think it maybe it was delivering something. It was, it was, I mean, not even the terrain can slow it down. It seemed like to be operating under a spell. It's going somewhere no matter what. I think if people stood in front of it, it would march them down. I think that's why it's eight feet tall. I think maybe it's being eight feet tall is not natural. I think it's maybe made to be that big to make sure it gets to where it's going. Or maybe it's like one of those things where where bystanders that witness it see it, but they're like they're just seeing it as like this big skeleton. They're not getting the actual message, but like other wizards in the area that see that, they're like, oh, the skeleton marches. <laughs> and it like means something it, among wizards and then they all have to gather in the desert every every five years and say this this magic spell and and perform this group ritual to quell the spirits that roam the desert to to save humanity that is fucking awesome yeah dude the the glowing what would you say the burning skeleton marches it's like a secret symbol for like we must gather and defend Earth's realm. And there's like a battle in some type of magic dimension. See, Marvel yeah, movie. Yeah, we have no idea about it. We just, we hear stories of these giant fucking skeletons and we're just like, oh my God, it's a giant skeleton. Meanwhile, wizards the world over are like, you fools, it's more than just a skeleton. <laughs> You're all doomed. You're all dead. If you knew what we saved you from, you'd be kissing our asses. <laughs> kiss it, kiss my wizard ass. Show gratitude to my magical Heidi. 
with your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's what they want. They just we we don't know. We're just the stupid people in the background that have no idea the sacrifices that <laughs> that the wizards have to do to save us from these otherworldly creatures. And because of our negligence, we will now give them compensation orally. How dare you ignore us? Next year, we will let them feast on you. You'll be <laughs> begging for us then. <laughs> You'll be begging for us then. You, you will? will be begging. Yes, yes, wizard. Let me fillet you while you cast your spells to get rid of these monsters. That is what you will say, and I will say no. You cannot fillet my wizard penis because it is too late. <laughs> You're doomed. <laughs> oh, let's talk about kissing his ass here. I don't know about. Hey, man. There's there's two sides to that coin. <laughs> you don't know what the wizard wants. I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe he doesn't have a penis. Maybe he has an ass on his front as well. He's a wizard. I don't know what magical <laughs> beings have for genitals. I'm only speculating, guys. So, wizard, if I if I misjudged your genitals, my apologies. <laughs> That's like the celib- celibacy curse for all wizards. Your front is now a butt. You've got a butt front. But what happens to my butt? It's also a butt. <laughs> Will I poop on a butt? Yes. Yes, you will. And that's why wizards always want to get their asses kissed, because they've got two asses, and they're just like, there's so many asses, I need at least one of them kissed, please. Of all my troubles. <laughs> so, so people out there in, in podcast land, if you know a wizard, please kiss their ass, because they save us all the time. They're, they're probably saving us right now. As you're listening to this, somewhere there's a wizard in the desert battling fucking demons and giant skeletons and we don't even know about it the the government doesn't want us to know they're they're too busy pushing the fucking alien agenda it's not fucking aliens man these lights in the sky the wizard wars yeah fucking wizard wars we've said it the whole time oh well that's it for skeletoids and again a weird send-off guys but christmas is over new year's is coming but we're recording now no more breaks we're back at it Mike's got a new robot kneecap that shoots uh, out a laser that makes a shield in front of it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's also got a uh, high frequency owl repellent. Yeah. So, right. Any owls within a half mile radius instantly go insane and and explode. So, oh shit, come and get yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm you know I'm pretty well off here. The <laughs> the owls will rue the day that they messed with me. Now they they've only made you stronger. Yeah, they thought they took me down. Little did they know. I shall have the last laugh. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Get yourself a Whatcast t shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewattcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.